Welcome back to another edition of Eat My Short, right here at Rant and Share. It's going to be a filter dibinum in place of a lucky strike. Sorting the world's problems out after getting mom calmed the fuck down. Man, oh man, has it been a day. <clears throat> I think I've figured out why she's having an increased level of anxiety and paranoia and fear. She had that MRI yesterday, and they're sending her to some specialist doctor, because, you know, these fucking cocksuckers all have to get their cut of the insurance blood money. I don't think there's really anything wrong with my mother that, like, goes beyond normal aging issues. But, you know, we're being safer than sorry. Shout out to Noisy Cessna Planes. They always know right when I'm filming. Everybody say hi, Billy. Okay, I'll wait. All right, now that we got that out of the way, what are we going to talk about today? Well, whilst trying to sit on my butthole... I might add very unsuccessfully because my mother and mongoloid aunt have other plans for me today that do not involve me sitting on my butthole in my chair watching my gun videos. I got caught up on all those, you know, I can tote the phone around with me and listen whilst I work. And you know who you are. If you're a channel and you see me hanging around, chances are I dig your work. But uh, failing that, I'm kind of watching a movie. I watched Hardcore Henry this morning, which, by the way, you should watch Hardcore Henry. It's free on Tubi. You know, like, we get to see all the cool movie guns and how they work, right? Especially Russian movie guns, okay? And the idea of suppressing a Tokarev, for some reason, amuses me, even though I don't think it would work, because it's like a spicy, spicy round, and you'd have to subsonic it or, you know, severely download it. But, you know, it looks cool on film, right? Like in No Country for Old Men, that suppressed shotgun... Like, who doesn't love that? Okay? <clears throat> but I'm watching a movie. It's called Gridlock. You should watch this movie, especially, like, if you're trying to understand how a drug addict works. Uh, I know some of you at home have struggled with uh, dependency issues before. And no, I don't mean depends as in, you know, like old people pampers. I mean dependency, like, you know, substance abuse. And they call it abusing the substances. I, I don't really think it's abuse. You know, they were designed to be used and treated accordingly. It's not like taking little Timmy behind the water heater and fingering him or something. You know, like in that movie, Freddy got fingered. But film has interesting ways of depicting drug addicts to humanize them. And we all, uh, in all reality, you know, there's varying levels of substance use and abuse in life. Uh, I know because I've used and abused substances more than I care to admit, right? Some of you might have encountered my shenanigans online after one too many beverages. So you get the picture. <clears throat> now, there are several different schools of thought, you know, in the dope community. Some people are smokers and some people are pokers, right? And I always found it funny, like, people won't cross a certain line in their substance abuse. Like, for me, that was sharing needles, okay? I don't share needles, all right? Now, if you want to use mine after I'm done with it, that's fine. It's yours at that point. And that's your problem. You take the risks, okay? I don't have that, no hepatitis, no AIDS, none of that shit. Um, and there's a reason why. That's because, you know, clean the injection site, clean yourself, clean the needle, right? Use the clean needle. <clears throat> but I've met some interesting people in my life that really, I don't know, it intrigued me, I guess. Like, for example, okay, uh, I brought up Laura the MILF. Uh, she was pretty cool. Um, I didn't actually know she was married. Of course, we didn't do a whole lot of talking, if you catch my drift. Um, she had this, like, big fucking ranch-style mansion, right? She used to let me drive her vintage Corvette, you know, to go pick up dope and shit like that. Because, like, you know, who doesn't want to drive in a fucking vintage Stingray, right? You know, she gave me heroin money a lot of the time. And, and she'd use, like, $1,000 worth of painkillers a day. I'm not making this up. And she didn't care about paying retail price either, of course. You know, I was an economical drug addict. You know, I always wanted more bang for my buck. And, yeah, I shot up pills, too, you know. Hydromorphones, oxymorphones, morphines, you know, things like that. They're water-soluble, right, with enough effort. 
but you know, there, there's your drugstore cowboy kind of, you know, addict where they like, they take everything as long as it's a prescription drug. And then there's the people that are bottom feeders, kind of like I was that just like, okay, this is drugs. It goes in needles, shove it in the arm and we, the fun begin, right? But see, they are in movies and TV, they always have your street level drug dealers, some like gangbanger with, with a cheap pistol that can't shoot worth a damn. And that's not true to life in my experience. Okay. Most dealers I've ever met are actually terrified of weapons because they get five years in prison. Plus if they're already a felon, they get like 10 years for the round in the chamber and another year for every round in the magazine. Like they get some pretty serious enhancements added. So what most dealers do is if you're going to carry the gun, like I did, you have your female counterpart choach the dope, right? What's choaching the dope? Well, it's hiding it in the sugar walls. Right, because if you get stopped, frisked by the cops, chances are they're not going to have their fingers inside of it, just like I would Fuego's sister. You know, it is what it is. You know, like I said, I don't condone this behavior, but I feel like setting the record straight. Like, and, and you know, there's a lot of old movies, and, and some of them get the dope right, some of them don't get the dope right. And, you know, it's just kind of entertaining and comical that the average person that's never tried dope, they watch these movies and they think this is how dope works. And in all reality, it doesn't. You know, I was one of those special kind of users because I like these things called speed balls, which is where you take a powerful stimulant like cocaine, which I'm not really a fan of, but, you know, I'll do it. Well, I did. Uh, I've been clean like 10 years. Been a minute. Or, or you do like what I do and you use some really good methamphetamine and you put a little bit of heroin in there. That way you get the bell ringing effect, you know, that way you get undope sick and you catch a buzz, right? And, you know, it's one of those things that I think in my generation, the stigma of substance abuse is kind of lost its stigma in the sense that, you know, when I was a, a young doper and I was doing doper like things, that it was just a dirty secret. And like, if people found out you were an IV drug user, that, you know, you were cast out like a leper. Nowadays, they give you clean needles. Some places give you free dope. They give you safe injection sites to like, where if you nod out or something, somebody hits you with Narcan, <coughs> which I mean, and you wonder why these people wake up swinging like you do like a hundred bucks worth of heroin. And, you know, like you're nodding the fuck out. And then somebody hits you with Narcan and it like instantly makes you dope sick. Of course, you're going to wake up swinging, you know, but the all reality of this. And you may say, well, what does this have to do with preparedness? You know, I'm getting to that. You know, bad things happen in life and people use substances to get by. And, you know little Timmy or Susie or Billy fuckface, you know, they might very well be on the dope. You know, uh, a good indicator, right? Uh, blackened spoons, right? From getting things warmed up. You know, they weren't trying to get their cereal hot, you know. Uh, needle caps, you know, rolled up dollar bills, straws, razor blades, mirrors, you know, shit like that. You know, it, it's it's part of recognizing the animal, right? And, and dope is an animal, you know. You can make friends with it, you can tame it, but in the end, you know, it's still a wild fucking animal, and if you're not careful, it will eat you. But, you know, it, it goes hand in hand with mental health, because everybody handles crazy differently, okay? I, I'm one of those people that I like to smoke and swear and cuss about things and drink too much and you know, normal man-like behavior. But there was a time in my life when, you know, my idea of a good time was, you know, shoot up, nod the fuck out for a while, and then screw my fucking brains out. Why? You may ask. I asked why not, and that was part of the problem. You know, discretion is the better part of valor, and once you get to a certain age, you're kind of a little too old to be horsing around with the horse. 
now when I kicked, it was not really that big of a deal. Like I was sick for a week, but you know, I got over it. My old lady, on the other hand, you know, the first one, um, she had to go in and out of rehab constantly, you know, and she didn't really do all that much. She just like, it just did something to her body, you know, like she liked it too much, but she was also a female and could not handle her dope. You know, so recognizing the problem is the problem, okay? Like, and this is something I'll never understand, is like, people will tell me all the time how drugs are bad for you, and they'll give you a million reasons why, but they've never actually tried the dope themselves. They're just repeating what they hear. You know, like in the gun world, people freak out all the time over things, and it turns out to be a nothing burden. Right. Well, they give you all the reasons you shouldn't do the dope, but they've never tried it themselves. Do you see what I mean? Like you, you get it all the time in the Bible community, like people that have never actually done naughty things with their life, you know, and they've lived a basically clean and normal and vanilla existence, you know, will tell you that, you know, being a drunken pervert is a bad thing. And I'm not going to say it's, you know, a hobby. Right. You know, it's definitely not a way to live your whole life. <laughs> like my dad used to tell me, you know, fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life. But he also told me that, son, when you work a dead-end, stinking job, you have no future, and your family is nothing but a bunch of dependents that depend on you to survive, then you've earned the right to pass out in your own filth and wake up with a hangover. And I think... There has to be boundaries with things, right? See, for some people, like, they have that boundary where, okay, there's needles involved, I'm not playing anymore. You know, or there's, you know, I only like stimulants, so I'm not going to do the other stuff. And this is all stuff you got to figure out yourself. Uh, but it's okay to talk about it, you know. Other places, you know, they get all butthurt about it. I, I don't really give a fuck I'm pretty open about things because, you know, I believe that it might help somebody else who's struggling with these issues. And if you yourself have problems, you know, just like the Sex Pistols do, leave problems down in the comments. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to go inside because my filter tube of doom is burning my fingers and I have an old person to care for. So, as always, take care. God bless. Have a wonderful day. And if you don't like it, eat my shorts.